fest well before we conclude for the day we have one last session for this hall and we are about to begin yet another but very interesting panel discussion coming up right next for you all thank you for joining in for this last session all our attendees we request if you have someone you know who would like to attend the session we can invite them over so the topic of discussion for this panel discussion is going to be omni channel strategy in the payment aggregation business and we have with us mr gorish kurgaonkar he'd be moderating the session where well, he's the head of fintech relationships national payments corporation of india npci give it up for mr gorish kurgaonkar as i invite him up here on stage alongside the panelists i'll have a quick mention for all of them we have with us mr rahul kothari chief business officer razorpay we have with us mr nakul jain ceo and md payment services limited paytm mr karthik ganpati cto bill desk mr tanya naik head online and omni channel business pine labs and mr vasan jaypal chief executive officer campspay so may we please request mr moderator and of course all our panelists to join up here on the stage and we request uh, gorish ji to begin the session Uh, very good evening to everyone present here. Uh, thank you for attending the panel. I know there is there is far more interesting events happening side by side, and we just concluding a lot of them. But uh, many thanks for attending this one. I think uh, you know we were just talking about this. This is one of a very interesting panel that a lot of people would have attended had it not coincided with uh, one of crazy launches that we were doing. Uh, but uh, you know it it is. Uh, and the less and the more you talk about it you know the more uh, ideas come on to it uh, upi on credit we we've, we've just launched and this is this is a moment that uh, uh, we at npci and the industry has been waiting for over the past two years uh, it was uh, it, it was in in action for for a while now uh, but uh, we had to solve a lot of other threads to get this going so uh, we have uh, with upi on credit uh, you know uh, we have actually closed the last frontier is what i feel you know uh, in the last 7 years of upi what what we saw is uh, 64% of digital transactions today are are on upi and uh, car transactions have moved from double digits to single digits on upi you know that's that's a sizable change and what remained on uh, on upi uh, on uh, cards uh, was a large ticket transaction with upi on credit coming in i think the large ticket transactions will also simultaneously move so where does that leave us with cards so uh, you know value was largely on cards and which i see now moving to uh, you know uh, upi on credit mm, we have you know what we have done is we have solved the problem i believe on the consumer side uh, today consumer has uh, you know access to all the channels uh, and you know it's become omni channel for him but uh, you know one device can do offline one device can do online you can scan qr you can make the payments uh, but uh, while we've solved the problem on on the customer side have you know what uh, what about the problem on the merchant side you know and i would like to invite views from all of you uh, on how do we how how do you at uh, your organization intend to solve this omni channel payments in you know in uh, your space so you know let me start with uh, karthik uh, you know on this uh, you know bringing his views in to start with i think would be very very interesting so karthik here you go stage is all yours thanks gaurish uh, so prima facie this topic on uh, omni channel has been around for 
a long time actually. Uh, you know, as as I would say, it's the same customer who wants to buy something. It's the same merchant that uh, is really selling the service or the product. It's normally always the same product that uh, the merchant is selling. Uh, and in that context, there is really no reason why there is a distinction between an offline and an online kind of uh, you know, existence. Having said that, unconsciously, the way providers have worked, in the past it was primarily the banks that would service it, right? And yeah. they would create silos to say that for certain kind of merchants who are largely online, we will offer them online products. And for certain kind of merchants who are offline, we will have offline ways and means for them to collect payments. It's only now that what one is seeing, a convergence of the two, because mm. you want to mine the same data of the customer, you want to give probably the same user experience. The customer is demanding exactly. uh, experience which is similar to what he or she is experiencing on one world versus the other, and therefore a lot of innovation driving this convergence. So omnichannel is a, is a very, very clear direction where all parties, all providers will have to evolve. But having said that, the way we would probably think about it is that it's not a compulsion for every entity to start thinking about omnichannel uh, ASAP immediately. It finally boils down to, to my mind, uh, also what, who's your customer? Exactly. What kind of uh, expectation the customer the currently are. has and is going to have in the future? And then depending on that, you could evolve a line of thinking or a product or an implementation strategy which precisely mirrors that. So Absolutely. I think that's the way it should probably go. Right. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, Nakul, you know, we, we, Paytm has always been uh, you know, one of the one of the leading entities in omni-channel. You know, you st while you know we had that conversation, and you said that we're still not there. Paytm is still not there. But uh, you know, what would be your strategy going forward on this? You know? <coughs> so, Gaurish, uh, see, we are in interesting times. First of all, on the payment space, and and we should feel proud uh, as an uh, you know each one of us that you know we are we are one of the fastest uh, payment markets in across the world. Uh, many developed countries also today take much longer than we do in the real-time payment space. And I think uh, RBI and PCI and many uh, payment companies like Paytm have, have a large role to play in it. Yeah. And we, are, you know, we should be happy about it. That That's something that we've completely revolutionized the market. Now, what's in it for the merchant? I guess, um, uh, like you know, we heard, uh, things are changing. Uh, consumer is the same. So it's, but, uh, you know, inevitable for the for the companies to start treating the merchant as one. Uh, you know, as the consumer walks in, and I'll give you a simple example. Uh, it'll make it things easier. Now, a customer could be purchasing a white good, hmm. and you know, he could be browsing. He or she could be browsing at home, <laughs> and then deciding to just walk into a uh, you know a store. Um, you know, at that point of time, may look at may find the product interesting could purchase it from the store itself through a EDC or make an online payment, or decide that let me go back home, take a view from my people at home, and then come back and browse on online, then make a payment online, or look at some deals that he can he or she can get, or order a COD, hmm. and when the product gets delivered, might make, make a payment through a QR code. You know, so now in this entire journey that I spoke about is actually a real journey that many of us have gone through. There is online to offline to online to offline. Yeah. And and that's how seamless the payment companies will have to become eventually. I agree that there has to be intent. Yeah. Uh, of course, there has to be, uh, you know, the stakeholders have to be aligned. But but eventual goal has to be that the companies have to become uh, omni over a period of time because that's how the industry will evolve. Uh, now, how do we see uh, omni? Uh, at least in our context, I think, on one side, we offer a full stack of offline products, which is QR, Soundbox, EDC. Yeah. Uh, on the online side, we have the whole payment aggregation, uh, which, uh, and of course, then we have the unique advantage of, of, of our own app, right. 
you know, and, and, and that's where truly the Omni experience comes because, you know, uh, you, so you have the entire payment options as a first stack. Mm. Over that, we, we, we give the entire affordability and the uh, issued instruments, so whether it is BNPL, wallet, we offer, and over above that, it's our app where you can, mm. a merchant can come and actually target customers through, you know, it's the best way to target customers to do campaigns, do uh, deals GV with us. I think that's where we really want to go as an, uh, I think that's the way forward for each one of us if we really want to hit a Momni channel. So I guess that's the way, Gaurish, I look at it. No, great. Uh, I agree with you completely. In fact, uh, you touched upon customer, co you know, your customer convenience. And I think sandbo uh, your Soundbox is one of the game changers in terms of your customer convenience. You know, I, I think it's just brilliant to see that and to see the adaption, uh, adoption of it by the retailers, you know, it's, it's just brilliant. Coming to uh, Tanya, you know, um, uh, obviously Pine has been extremely active in, in this space and with the recent uh, acquisition and obviously with Setu coming in, how, how, how has your strategy evolved in this? I mean, maybe let a little bit of backstory about yeah, sure. how that Absolutely. all begun, yeah. right? Because, and Karthik touched upon it, we follow where the consumer goes. So in order for the most demanding consumer to give the best experience, <laughs> merchants need to evolve as well. Yes, sir. And as payment companies, all of us have that responsibility to provide for a seamless omni-channel experience. Right. Now, maybe a few years ago, having a neighborhood grocer send you a message telling you that you can now pay through a payment link. And not just that, if you pay through a certain payment mode, I would give you a certain loyalty reward associated with it in itself is a huge testament to the fact that Omnichannel has actually proliferated to really nearby neighborhood grocery stores. Right. Right. And so in order for us to cater to that, the way to look at Omnichannel is to, is to actually revamp the way you're looking at not just payments, but the entire merchant life cycle and his experience associated with payments. And payment is, by the way, a byproduct of what you will be engaging with the merchant on. So whether it is the way you're onboarding your merchant today as payment companies, and you know, Nakul, you spoke about it. Bo all of us have a certain online mode of operating. We have an offline mode of operating. But if the merchant is common and he wants you to offer all sorts of payment modes, then you need to onboard him seamlessly. Once you do that, how much more can you give him at point of sale? What all can you do with him, whether it is BNPL, whether it is checkout, whether it is maybe giving him uh, you know, uh, PCI DSS compliant online web checkout, whether it is creating an online store for him, all of this is associated with creating that merchant experience. Finally, the settlement of it as well, right? I mean, most of our merchants, I can tell you, uh, today struggle with the fact that they have so many disparate uh, payment gateways and they have so many disparate settlements coming to them. They have so many offline service providers who are you know, contracting with them and there really is no way for them to get a unified settlement and reconciliation done. And I think that even if we solve for it as one single payments provider, it's a huge bonus to our merchants. So whether it's in the form of unification of dashboards, whether it's in the form of unified settlements, onboarding, actual payment processing, there's a lot to be done there. And I think because consumers demand it, merchants demand it, and therefore payment companies like us have a lot to do. And obviously you look at the merchants themselves, right? They have today. So, so that is one reason I think the, the omnichannel did not happen from the company's point of view. The second, I think even when, when the, the company started evolving, uh, offline was pretty big space even before the online came in. And for the companies offline, big space, they were focusing on that. For online, new companies came in, big opportunities in online, and therefore they kind of focused on that. So there's a second reason I think still a lot of companies did not focus a lot on omnichannel so far. Third is also the kind of stakeholders, and, and while you initially you spoke about like it makes a lot of sense from the consumer perspective, why it is not moved from a merchant perspective. In merchant stakeholders, typically for offline and online are different. Uh, historically, like offline, while you know, for, for the offline payments, while experience was important, typically a customer would not walk away because his card did not work on the POS machine. Typically, the shopkeeper would say, "Okay, can you try again? Can you try a different, yes. different card, or eventually pay cash?" Whereas in online, it's very really different. If if a, you know, a, say a transaction fails, uh, the merchant loses the revenue, and therefore the focus of the stakeholders at the merchant side has been very different for online versus offline. And the way we have seen that, 
typically for offline, typically the finance side of the business are the biggest stakeholders. For online, typically product side of things are the biggest stakeholders. And, and while these things happen, uh, you know, I think over the last three or four years, uh, things have worked in a way where all these barriers are breaking. For example, on tech side of things, uh, while card rails might be different and still converging, for things like UPI, for things like BNPL, the tech rails for online and offline is pretty much the same. So that the barrier is kind of you know, uh, breaking there. Uh, even if you think from, say, a different company's perspective, today online in terms of volumes, almost like maybe not as big as offline, offline is probably $75 billion per month and online probably $25 billion per month from a P2M payments perspective, both the markets are significant enough where now companies need to look at the other side of business as well. So I think that's the second reason why companies are strategically thinking about omni and far more than what they were thinking earlier. Now also, now when I think about the you know stakeholder from the merchant's perspective, the, the, the what I talked about. Now in most of our discussions, we see both finance and product folks involved into both online and offline. And the way Tanya said, there are finance folks who now care about the experience of their own teams itself. Why do we need different settlement reports? Reconciliation is a problem, why don't we solve for it? Uh, similarly, a lot of offline payments also moving into different form factors other than POS, because experience becomes more and more important. So I think with all these barriers breaking, with consumers also now being far more conscious about their loyalty and rewards, mm -hmm. and asking that not only payment instruments, but my point should also work in offline, online seamlessly. So I think all those things are kind of uh, working very closely together, and I think it's right now is the inflection point where I think from where omnichannel uh, should should kind of scale very 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 fast. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much for that. I think uh, you know that is that is if we have those sort of thought processes, I think it will scale up much faster, and it has to be across the ecosystem. I think that will help this scale faster. You know, coming to the you know completely different and you know uh, centered perspective on this from a sector point of view, I think uh, Vasanji, what what are your thoughts on this? You know, how how do you see this pan out for you? Yeah, firstly, I, I agree with the uh, points that all the panelists made here. I think different perspective, different dimension. Uh, the space that I come from, I think it's a very long road when it comes to creating a omnichannel kind of an experience. Even though I can talk a little bit more about how this whole thing is Please. evolving, definitely the proliferation of omnichannel is really happening. Uh, have we really achieved what we want to achieve in terms of uh, creating a seamless experience. I think two aspects to it. One is we look at it from a merchant point of view. Other thing is looking at it from a customer and the experience point of view, right? Simple thing, simple example like, you know, Apple phone purchase today. I mean, many of us travel to other places and go and pick up a phone. You can, uh, you know, place a order online and then go and pick it up. That experience is seamless. But anything else beyond that uh, is not. There are about hundreds of payment methods today. All are absolutely disconnected. There's no data uh, symmetry in all of these things. A um, little bit of history. So how this all happened? So this payment platforms, the rails that we created, it all started with pretty much, like he's mentioned, offline uh, a lot. Then slowly we are moving towards more and more online transaction today. All these ecosystems are run, maintained, managed by different entities, different platforms, banks involved, platforms like NPCI and so on and so forth. For all this to come together, it's going to be a real, real challenge we're going to face. It is going to be a very tough call. It is not that you know all players need to adapt an omni-channel strategy. Um, at the same time, I see a lot of potential uh, players getting together in the form of, even though there's competition and everything else, there is a bit of you know cooperation that is uh, required. And we don't have to boil the ocean. I think there is a way to collaborate and then create a true experience to the end customers. And th that's a background I want to give lay later with you. Uh, talking about our industry, uh, there is very few payment methods that are being used today, okay? A lot of restrictions, a lot of uh, um, constraints that we have, uh, primarily coming through from a regulatory uh, requirement. So we serve an ecosystem where there are about the 30 trillion uh, worth of transactions, pay in and payouts happen. And, um, you know, it's a large amount of uh, number if you look at it. But what are the payment methods that we allow our customers, the investors, insured, especially the investors in this case, uh, there are only two major payment methods that we look at. And again, when it comes to um, the recurring payments, there are only a few flavors that we do. Only the later years, the recent years, we have been able to introduce all of this and then trying to do this. Again, it's again a long way for us to help an investor, for example, to switch between two payment methods. 
Okay, that is something that is a bit stated intent for a player like us. It's rather uh, easier said than done. The reason again is that we need to get the you know ecosystem together. Mm -hmm. Today, I think everything works as a silo. Even between two banks, the method that is used to process the transaction is different. Okay, we we talk about open banking. We talk about all of this. So at the end of the day, uh, there is going to be there is need for us to look at some sort of a guideline, policy, and the regulatory push as well. Okay, and coming together of all the different, we do have the forums for us to take up uh, those initiatives. Um, IMA, PCI, we have a lot of good conversations today. Yeah. I think that's a way to do it. To my mind, it's a long journey, but we will get it done. Thank you so much for bringing that perspective. I think it was very important to understand how it looks from that, you know, that sector point of view. But uh, you know, he large, you know, lightly touched upon the regulate regulatory uh, you know input and uh, regulatory push required to make this happen and uh, i think a common thing that came across was obviously uh, the need for uh, a layer uh, which is uh, you know common across uh, all the different payment aggregators uh, maybe the layer can be reconciliation uh, for that matter to make it easy for uh, you know your end customer so, uh, you know, uh, coming to Nakul, uh, what do you think is uh, required uh, more from a, you know, from a layer perspective that the regulator can look at? And uh, how do you see that happening? <coughs> Koresh, I think uh, among various things, uh, I, I strongly believe that, you know, one place that we can really work on, I mean, and when I say we, me, I mean uh, the entire fintech, PAs, banks, uh, I think we all can work together is to create a, a kind of a repository, you know. Uh, it can be a consortium which can work on a re negative repository. I think that's very, very critical because, uh, you know, I, we were discussing uh, in, the, in the room today that yeah. how, uh, you know, a, first a merchant can exit from one and can enter into another ecosystem. And, of course, there are different practices. And that brings me to the second point that can we have common risk practices being followed I think there is there is a need there, and of course the overall governance structure uh, around it. I think that that's one piece which which I definitely feel that can really help. The other piece is around the whole working together with the telecom companies. You know this whole uh, piece of banks again fintech telecom companies working together because so uh, frauds on social means made that are happening, mm -hmm. and of course DIU guidelines have called it out that you know they want us to work together. So I think that there are two things I genuinely believe that. It's happened, but it's not really happened at the length that, 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 that can help us help the whole payment industry to, to grow. Yeah. So uh, coming to Karthik, I think you've been part of many cohorts where you know this was this has been discussed, this has been debated, and uh, without really a, a structured outcome or outcome that not the industry expected. So wh where do you you know how do you think that we can make it happen? Uh, you know what is what is the push that is required? And Nakul lightly touched upon it. So. How do you see it moving? So, uh, prima facie, what you will see or what we've seen is uh, regulation is already there in respect of the payment method. Right. So, typically, whether it's offline or online, uh, one set of regulation will be, let's say, and the networks also bring in their set of standards and regulation. It is regulation. AMV co-compliance, you know, acceptance of PIN in a certain manner, the way a QR standard should be. So from a payment acceptance perspective, depending on the payment method, and uh, Vasanji kind of commented on the complexity of different payment instruments and methods, it's integral to uh, innovation in, the, in that space. If you just had one rail, Imagine, I would think UPI would have never happened. Yeah. So you have a rail, people experiment on it, then there are two, three more rails that happen, you work on that on top of it, and you will then have innovation. So uh, traditionally, there has been regulation on the payment rail because the way the regulation also is there is to make sure that there is no fraud, rightly like yeah. Nakul pointed. He was also referring to a bad merchant which is where you know there can be consortium and understanding and so on. Uh, but having said that, uh, regulation 
in terms of safety of a transaction is where can be we can we can want regulation to come in mm -hmm. uh, but there are a lot of other things which is the convergence of online and offline and i think those should be just left alone as opposed to regulation coming in like you could have innovation in reconciliation or sure. in billing or in integration or in just a bunch of other offerings but i don't think there should be any regulation because that it's best to evolve and see how it goes one thing however what might be uh, going forward very important uh, given the way the market is going and how everyone is looking at a convergence of omni channel mm -hmm. is about the data right so what is likely to happen is more and more at the offline store uh, there will be players merchants wanting to collect more data from customers yes. and we are a you know we'll soon be 2 billion people and it's very easy there are i think almost every place i go to i refuse to give my mobile number because they all have an incentive to get your number your data and your name and uh, record it and maybe you know create registration yeah. so there have to be some standards that are brought in like how will that data be taken how is the consent online we've now got the consent driven mechanism already in place yes so i think offline consent and uh, what data can be shared how they will store it how they can then in turn share it between providers i think all that becomes uh, a very very uh, important topic and so that's where i think regulation could help yeah tanya uh, as a as you know as a fairly large offline player at this point of time and kartik touched upon the data which is obviously being collected at point of sales largely when the large format stores so you know what are your views on this no i think uh, i mean he made a fantastic point uh, but the only thing there is that if the data is being collected by the company mm -hmm. who uh, who today may have collected it in an online or an offline format a can i keep it secure enough and b do i need to keep collecting it again and again mm -hmm. so the fact of the matter is if i have a repository and by the way all of us especially in the online payments world are going through a huge regulatory change in the form of tokenization yes. Yes. i'm actually going to be tokenizing every single card in the online ecosystem whoever transacts with me mm. why should that not now be made available in the offline format as well and why should i not be able to innovate on that so what i would say is that when you have access to this data which is obviously stored in the most secure form as defined by the regulator it should have the capability to transcend into another card card present ecosystem also mm -hmm. so that also would mean that the same customer therefore has a much secure way of storing his credentials and because there are players like us who are operating both in the online and offline world yeah. we do have a much better way of managing their data and be providing insights to merchants to better manage their customers so uh, from a regulatory standpoint i would say that whilst there has been a certain impetus to making secure transactions happen online maybe whilst whilst offline anyways is card present maybe the same impetus is given by leveraging the data already available online be made available offline as well mm. whilst you are catering to you know regulations and as far as you know vasant ji's point was concerned it's a very interesting segment because yeah, it has exactly. predominantly been a bank to bank transfer ecosystem it has also been an ecosystem where sebi has defined how certain transactions need to happen and then rbi because it has banking you know banking ecosystem underneath it has been defining how those transactions should happen right. so obviously now that you want more digitization of those transactions to happen you need to be able to proliferate the security associated with that bank transaction in the card world also mm. so i think as all of us we should be innovating in that space okay fine if i need a third party validation to happen on every account i should be able to do it even in a debit card mm. so i think all of us have that responsibility and you know maybe yeah. the yeah. regulation needs to be able to provide for such kind of innovation even in traditional you know market right. uh, capital market segment yeah. that's what i think yeah. that's a that's a great point uh, tanya uh rahul obviously uh, sorry uh, so obviously razor pay uh, you know operates in similar segment uh, so largely in the you know online space so just want to hear your views on you know how this can come in yeah 
So first, I think uh, from a regulatory perspective, uh, in general, we are seeing uh, far more action on the online side than on the offline side. And I think for the right reasons, because of online has been growing very fast. And while offline frameworks from the regulation perspective are pretty strong, in online, how this translate and how those kind of get applicable is seeing some action. But definitely, I agree with Tanya's point, like as we go forward, those two frameworks should converge for online, offline, for omnichannel. No, no, this is this is from the regulations from say the payments perspective. But but if we really think about omnichannel, I think we are seeing only a part of when we look only at payments, it's only a part of the entire solution. Uh, if you think from merchants' perspective, omnichannel is not just payments. Uh, omnichannel is about also say how does he manage his inventory in offline on online world together? How does he solve for say the logistics? Uh, issues in online offline work together how does he think about acceptance of payment in say a uh, cash on delivery versus payment on store together so so when we just think about payments i think it's in some ways relatively narrow view if we really want to create that impact for the merchant where they start thinking about omnichannel far more holistically uh, i think as of now no, even if you think about say the the companies like the the search engines or even say some of the companies like narrow companies like shopping carts, none, none of our kind of actually looking at end to end solution of this omnichannel problem. And I think the the, the reason is because nobody has because this problem is really broad. Yeah. Uh, different companies are focusing on their sectors and really trying to solve for those. But if we really want to take it a level up and solve for it, and I think maybe one of the ways is to have come some kind of standardization where all these different things can come to a single framework, single APIs kind of thing. Like for example, for single integrations, you are able to uh, take variables for payments as well, for inventory as well, for something specific logistics as well. And I think that standardization is something probably at some point regulators can enable. Because ultimately when we go from omnichannel phase one to phase two, it will not be just a payments problem, but it will be a far broader problem for the merchants. And th that, that's what I think about it. Vasanji? Your views on this? I mean, from a regul, uh, you touched upon regulatory uh, briefly, but uh, you know, what what are the radical changes that you think would uh, help the ecosystem in general, the ecosystem that you cater to? Yeah, firstly, I think the regulators are looking at the payment, the overall ecosystem, uh, in the right way today. I think um, we heard about this EMV and all those kind of standards. Typically, those are borrowed terms. Um, I personally have been hearing this right from year 2000, okay? The real implementation of all of this happened somewhere in the late 2000s, let's say 2008 and nine. Uh, it would happen in sporadic you know, zones, let's say, only in the point of sale location, not on the ATM, okay? So a lot of these gaps that are there. Today, the regulator's looking at very, very differently, okay? What is very important for the uh, ecosystem here and there is a sense of you know people coming together. That is something that is a very encouraging thing that we're looking at. Two is, I don't call for any uh, strict regulation or anything. It's more to do with creating right kind of guidelines. That is the important uh, point. I think Kanye rightly pointed out. Uh, it's a, a pity that we have close to a billion cards in this country. Mm. We are not able to exploit that uh, payment method to serve one of the most matured ecosystem. Okay, investors are the in the most educated lot, the literate lot. They are not allowed to do a card-based transaction, which otherwise would be the easiest ways to solve. Yeah. Um, early on, in my own uh, way, I think uh, in banks, we have uh, the way we have implemented the systems. There is a very clear correlation between card and the account number. Mm. That linkage is still available. Yeah. Just that all of us go back and see what is being created on the rails, and reactivate some of these uh, things. Uh, like again, I'm a major fan of saying that let's all get together and make it happen. That's the only way to do. I think our regulators are going to uh, be very happy about uh, our suggestions and recommendations. And that will take us a long way when it comes to making this omni-channel strategy for payments a reality. Right, so, uh, you know, uh, to the positive time, uh, you know, one thing I wanted to get, and that came out again and again, uh, Rahul spoke about it. I think uh, on the standards, and obviously AMV Co is a standard, uh, on aggregation, you know, uh, do you think that uh, there is there is scope? And I know it's it's m like moving a mountain, but uh, <laughs> Karthik, do you think that, uh, th you know, there is, there is a play for uh, creating this, and how do you think that it will aid the ecosystem? <laughs> so, uh, I think there's no need to 
kind of over engineer uh -huh. a standard to my mind mm. because in pocket standards are already getting created yeah. like for credit you have standards for like the point that uh, rahul said uh, ondc will come with its own set of standards because buyer seller apps will be part of an ecosystem exactly. they will push in data in a certain way discovery will happen in another way yeah uh, then account aggregation will help with data sharing kind of standards payment already we have standards so that that works maybe what might be useful is because all these entities are developing their own standards correct what we could look at is uh, and this i'm just picking a leaf from some other conference where people had discussed this mm. we could have good technology people and policy people think of what could be uh, platform led layer led standards so for instance a framework right so the iso 20022 or whatever the for the for payments is once a standard but it's not typically been adopted in in various implementations people use xml people use iso 8582 then there is rest in different <coughs> ways then there are just plain http so uh, all of that kind of creates what i would term as a khichdi so yes. maybe data exchange standards at a very superior level and it always helps the cost of reinventing is then much lower so different entities could pick from that standard and say look that framework apply it and then move forward so Absolutely. it's like the benefit that you as one entity are creating a set of interfaces and you want to give another set of interfaces to the same external client mm. sometimes it's very easy to say hey look you, you know apply the same thing everything will be the same and you just have to connect using these different uh, let's say interface spec so that might be useful awesome thank you so much for that and i think vasan ji uh, you know requested that he has some serious views on this so let's hear it from him <laughs> sure um so i'll just take away from what kartik said so the two things that we need to keep in mind we are talking about tokenization today this is going to cover only one piece of the uh, you know this payment method which is cards yeah why can't we create this tokenization across the payment method it's an easy way to think but it's a very logical way also to think we can may think about creating references for all the transaction irrespective of which channel the payment uh, transaction happens it is not very difficult i'll give a uh, very useful meaningful reference point today account aggregation the promise of account aggregation today is to be able to aggregate all the data which is coming through 18 different sources and then with a constant layer kicking in in every level of our um, in a conversation it's easy for us to think even the transaction logs transaction uh, reference points all of that can be combined aggregated that will be a very powerful way to look at it again i go back to my original point all this can happen provided we have create standards is what we are talking about yes i would say that we have to create common standards that is extremely important and that's that's my final word thanks thank you so much for that tanya oh, your thoughts on this i mean if i were to summarize this you know yeah. the one uh, network which actually can standardize commerce in general is ondc i truly believe it absolutely whether it is from the point of view of discovery for the buyer whether it is management of the seller's inventory whether it is connectivity in terms of payments whether it's reconciliation and settlements there literally disputes and uh, you know dispute resolution management uh i believe with if if it is implemented in the manner that it is expected to it will truly create the gold standard for managing omni channel commerce as a whole and uh, from what i understand is that beyond just retail and quick commerce there will be uh, use cases which will include capital market transactions yes. uh, you know in yes. some time bill payments i mean multiple such use cases which are in the offing so uh, i would think that uh, in terms of standardization when it comes to omni it would be ondc in my view awesome nakul no i agree with tanya i think um, ondc is an interesting case and it is as to see how it evolves over a period of time yeah. but but everything that she spoke about i guess you know we just have to see how it plays through and how it has a large play in the ecosystem i'm only worried about how the margins will be for the players i think <laughs> let me be very uh, you know let me be a little yeah, interesting business stuff also here but 
But I guess that's the, I just hope that only the courier guys don't end up missing money. Anyway. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. Uh, lastly, coming to you, Rahul, uh, you know, your, your views on you know, how this would help. No, so, so I think I agree with everyone's views and, uh, but, but while I agree with it, I think the just thought comes in mind, be very careful for what you wish for, it might come true. Like the, the way Nicole said, right, the, the margins might get impacted, but also I think standardization has its use when you are really trying to get a flywheel going. Uh, and there has to be a right time where those standardization is okay. You can follow, but you don't need to. Otherwise, innovation gets curtailed. And I think and that's the only thing kind of, you know, that, that I, I think beyond that, but otherwise definitely align that we should do something on standardization. Thank you so much for that. And then, you know, pretty awesome to just hear these and these views. And, you know, uh, hopefully someone is listening and, you know, we'll, we'll obviously get some uh, action on all these things. Uh, right now, what we are doing is basically we're standing between the audience and the sundowner. So all of you are please invited to the sundowner, which is happening uh, for us. Uh, NPCI is holding a sundowner. Please, everybody is welcome. Uh, I'll open it up for uh, a couple of questions from the audience. So anybody would like to, uh, you know, have uh, a couple of questions that we can post to the panel today. That was a very insightful session. Uh, but just one question: How do you see the like you guys are on the ground and you know acquiring merchants uh, day in day out? So how do you see the acceptance on the merchant side on the you know the omni-channel strategy as we speak? So any thoughts around that? How are they taking it? Mm. Open to anyone then. Yeah, uh, Rahul. So uh, there are like. Uh, uh, I think I would say there are only very few very tech-centric companies from where we see a pull for omnichannel. Uh, for most of other businesses, uh, whether traditional businesses or whether those are slightly, say, smaller businesses, uh, as if as of now, I do not see a strong demand for it. And I think this is also a bit of a, a kind of uh, letting letting the merchants know uh, what are the benefits out of it and how do they kind of really really uh, make the best of it. I think it's also a function of some of the, you know, uh, how business operates a bit different for online and offline. Uh, they were saying earlier, like the stakeholders are different, probably finance versus product. And also, I think uh, in general, the GTM strategies for the companies are very different in online and offline world. Uh, online world for the smaller merchants typically is a marketing-led strategy, uh, whereas for the offline world, it's more of a feet on street-led led strategy. And therefore, I think it it's, it's, will take probably companies to combine the two strategies at scale and, you know, get the right kind of pull from the ecosystem. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, sure, sure. I think, uh, you know, a lot of it has to do with also how, as payment companies, we make the whole process easier, okay? At the end of the day, the merchant wants to accept payments and wants to right. see a unified process of accepting payments. Now... As he rightfully said, by the way, every merchant who is a tech-savvy merchant and who is, by the way, already present online, offline, wants an omni-channel strategy because he does want to see data in one place. He does go to orchestration partners to collate data in one place. So the demand is there, however, in enterprise-heavy merchants. As far as the long tail is concerned, and by the way, you just look at the proliferation of startups who are enabling these stores to go online, the demand is definitely there. Now, how it is that payment companies enable a better, seamless experience is really up to us. So I would say right now, uh, it is predominantly held at the enterprise layer, but it is up to us to proliferate this to the mid-market and SMB layer. I would like to hear from uh, yeah, you know, Nakul on this. I have a point here, and I just, you know, just adding on to what uh, Rahul and Tanya said. See, also you have to be you know, moving around with the customer in their life cycle. So uh, a merchant may start off as a as a physical store, and may over a period of time evolve into a a full fledged uh, you know online merchant, and it can happen the other way around that a merchant may start off as a you know like a quick ice cream app on a Instagram, and as it becomes bigger, may have multiple stores across Bombay, Delhi, and then they want you know offline solution. So can as a payment company you catch the full a uh, leg of the merchant and move around with them in their life cycle. I think that's critical. So it's very hard to say today whether this merchant will evolve or not, but you have to be around the merchant and 
you know, provide the solution along their life cycle. I think that's critical. Thank you so much for that. I think uh, there we have it, guys. Uh, you know, uh, largely uh, uh, from uh, from the points that uh, I would like to bring forward, hearing uh, all the speakers, is that yes, there is. Uh, you know, omni-channel is definitely the way forward in terms of strategy. Uh, but yes, uh, you know, you have to look at your what your customer wants, and uh, you know, deliver to to that. You know, n not necessarily that everybody goes omni-channel, but yes, I mean, if you have the customer. I mean, and if there is a need for it, I think it needs to be addressed. Otherwise, the customer might end up, you know, moving. Uh, also, uh, there is obviously, a, you know, a, a larger need uh, to combine resources at this point of time. Uh, creating a unified layer, maybe on, uh, you know, solving some of the con uh, the end customer problems. Uh, yes, uh, there is also a case uh, for creating standards. I think uh, that would take away a, a, you know, a lot of pain uh, from the ecosystem. Uh, uh, last closing remarks from me. Okay, um, just from a follow up point on this. Uh, from a merchant point of view, right? It makes sense, let's say uh, the example for a mature merchant. Mm -hmm. It makes a lot of sense for them to go with omni-channel strategy yeah. with a partner who can provide all types of payments under one umbrella. Okay, the reason for that is the number of integration that you do. Mm. Right, the time it takes to you know go live to the market, right? All those can be cut back, and you get one view. Today, majority analysts in some very developed uh, retailer kind of a scenario, they don't get one view at all about their customer. There are a lot of research study available. Howard Business Review published mm. a, a report on this, uh, going by omni-channel strategy, not just for payments, even otherwise. Yeah. Their uh, ability to you know uh, convert sales. That it's about you know 10 percent over uh, more when it comes to omni-channel, as compared to a silo-based kind of approach. There are many ways that you you need to look at it. I take the point. The merchant needs to be matured. The technology they have a tech savvy. They should be able to first of all uh, zero down to the right kind of partner. That is very very critical. Then the rest is the play. All right, uh, that's for it, folks. Thank you so much uh, to all the panelists for giving your time and sharing your point of view. Well, thank you, and I request our panelists to please stand up for a group picture, a picture-perfect moment to summarize this session and also the day. It's been quite a productive day for each one of us. And uh, without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to conclude today's productive day here. And I'm sure a lot of networking can happen one-on-one -on -one post all the sessions. And day two awaits you all. So once again, on behalf of Global Fintech Fest, this is your host, Drashti, signing off. May you have a very great evening ahead. Thank you. Thank you.